Hola, mi amigos. That's about all the Spanish I know. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2D platform gaming tutorial in Unity with James. That's me, and I'm awesome. This is a series, so if you have not watched the previous videos, I recommend going back and watching them, otherwise you will be lost. You can still pick up some of the basic concepts from this video, but if you're trying to complete the game in a way that we are, I recommend going back and watching them in order. This is currently part four of a very long series. In today's lesson, we are going to take our 2D player and make his animated, or make his sprite animated so that his legs move. Okay, this is key to making your players believe in the character you have in your game. Now we're going to animate him. Now to make an animated sprite, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can change the texture constantly every frame depending on the input of the player. Or we can avoid reinventing the wheel as it were and we can just go download a script from the Unify community the wiki, the wiki.unity3d.com go to the effects section so we're gonna go to scripts, effects, animated tiled texture extended and click on that one and it's got a nice little description tells you what all the variables are, how to use it, gives you an example image to use, and then there's the script in both JavaScript and C Sharp for whatever you prefer. I'm just going to copy this code from who, whatever lovely person posted it out there. I'd give you credit, but it doesn't look like your name's anywhere on here, so good job to whoever you are. We're going to go back into Unity. Oops, that's MonoDevelop. We're going to right click in scripts, create JavaScript, and we're going to name it Animate Texture. If I could type tonight, there we go. Animate Texture. So we're going to press open in the inspector panel. So we're going to pop open the Animate Texture script, highlight everything, and right click, paste. Paste it in the code. Now we'll go over these variables and what they do in a later time. If you really want to go through it, I recommend reading the documentation on this page. It tells you where the animations will start, what everything of these variables does. But I will go over them in the, uh, in the Unity window. So we can just save the script as it is. We don't need to change anything. It works great. Leave it alone. We're going to go to our graphics object. We're going to grab our animated texture script and drag it down. Now we get to go over these variables. COL count, or column count, is the number of columns in our sprite sheet, which is just a giant sheet full of little images of this guy. But the important key is that it counts to Unity as one image, not a bunch of them. Okay, the second is row count, how many rows are on the sheet. The next is the row number you want it to start on, or which whichever row it's currently on, the current column it's on, the total number of cells, and the frames per second. Now you'll notice currently that our sprite is just one picture. This script is not going to do anything. In fact, it's probably going to look extremely ugly if I play the game. Or it's not going to look like anything at all. Okay. So what we need to do is have a sprite sheet. So what I'm going to do is open up a window here, go to my documents, find my sprites. Where are they at? The tutorial games. There we go. So this is our player. And I've taken our same little guy from Microsoft Paint, where we drew his, or well, I drew his awesomeness. And I have drawn out some images for a sprite sheet. Now the first row is him idle. He doesn't move at all. That's why all the images are exactly the same. But you'll notice in the second row his legs move. Okay? This is where the animation happens. But since we need an idle row, we leave it right here idle all the way across. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this into our textures folder. We're going to go into the textures 
and change our settings from repeat to clamp, from bilinear to point, from 1024 to 32, compressed to 16 bits, and apply. Makes our stuff really, 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 really tiny. Okay, we're going to go back to our graphics object, click on the select for the player material we created all the way back in lesson number two. We're going to scroll down and find our player texture. Okay, now you'll notice that's really ugly. So I think I'm going to change the settings from 32 to 128 and apply. Okay, it's still pretty ugly but we'll see how it turns out when we play. So on the graphics object, how many columns do we have? One, two, three, four columns. How many row counts do we have? Well, we only have one, two. So we're going to change this four to a two. If we play our game right now, he's just idle. He does still flip, but we want his legs to move. So let's test this by changing the row number to 1. So the rows are numbered starting at 0. So the first row, the idle, is 0, and this is 1. Not 1 and 2, 0 and 1. 0 and 1. It's important. That's why I'm repeating it. Okay? So the row number is 1. And now, yeah, look at that. A little guy's legs are just a kicking. Let's scale them up so you can see that. Actually, I don't want to scale that up. I want to scale this one up and move them up here. Look at those little legs. He is just, oh, and it flips. He's just a running. He's a running fool. He's a running man. All right. Well, what we want him to do is idle when he's sitting still and run when we press a button. In order to do that, we have to change this script from somewhere else. Okay? So we're going to set the row number back to zero. And we're going to go to scripts, right click, and create a JavaScript. We're going to call this player animate. Okay? Since my player is in 2D space and all I plan on having him do for this video tutorial is jump around, I only need the two rows. Now, if you were animating something like a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat style 2D game, you're going to have much, much more complex animations with many, many, many more frames. So if you're just starting out, I recommend keep it simple. So we're going to open the script in Mono Develop. So how do we access a script that's not in this one? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're first going to create a variable. And we're going to call it AT. And that's all we're going to do for the variables. Now what we're going to do is go down here to function start and we're going to say AT is equal to game object dot get component and actually we need that to be a lowercase g game object dot get component and we're going to put in here animate texture. You can see it pops up in my IntelliSense there because it's smart and it knows that's what I want. And you'll notice animate texture is capital A, capital T. That's why we named our variable A T. So now in the update function we're going to check when our player pushes buttons again. I'm going to say if input dot get key A that's the left movement key, then we want the player to move left. Put in our brackets. We're going to say else if input.get key D. That's the right movement key. So when the player moves left, we want him to run. And that's it. The texture flipping will already point him in the right direction. We just want to make sure that it switches from sitting still to running. Right? So in the animate texture, we're going to change this, the row number. It will switch it from 0 to 1. 
or basically from standing still to running. So we're going to say at dot row number, and the the uh, the capitalization is important here. So you go to your texture. N is capital. The R is not. So row number equals one. Now, if our player is moving to the right, we also want it to play running. So we can just scroll over this, right click, copy, come down here, right click, and paste. But once our player starts running, we want him to go back to sitting still if he stops moving. So finally, we can say else, and then we just set it again. So we paste it one more time except this time we set it to zero. So let's go over this code one more time. Okay, so for this one we're going to store something. We don't know what it is yet. And in here, we're going to store the animate texture script. And when we store it like that, what it does is it gives us access to all of its tiny little pieces like the row number that we need to change. So in here, player moves left. We're going to change to the running animation. Here, the player moves right. We are also going to change to the running animation. What if he's already running to the left and I switch from left to right real quickly? Well, it doesn't matter. It's still going to stay at 1. Last and finally, the player is not moving because he's not pressing any of those keys. We want to change to the idle or basically standing still animation. Exclamation point because standing still is awesome. We can save this, head on back to Unity, let it finish its code compression stuff. It's going to freak out for a couple of minutes. Uh, it's going to tell me that I can't do it this way and that I lied to all of you and I'm a horrible, horrible human being. So instead what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this part. But don't need it. We're going to grab all of this, right click, cut, Right after this bracket, we're going to right click and paste. And then at the very front, we're going to say bar. Save the game. Head on back to Unity. Let it do its code stuff. The error disappears. No more errors. Now what we need to do is put this on the actual object. So we go to graphics. Click and drag down our player animation. Now this has to be in the same place as the animate texture on the graphics object, not on the first person controller, on the graphics object, okay? So if we run the game now, he starts out standing still, but if I press the A key, you can look over on the right hand side of the screen where my arrow is going, follow my arrow, right over here is a row number you will see move to 1 when I'm pressing the A or D key. When I let go, he stands still. And the texture flipping makes sure that the running animation and the standing still is facing the right direction. And now we have an animated player. If I don't press any keys when he's jumping, he jumps straight up and down. When I hold down the moving keys A and D, or the arrow keys, he's kicking in the air as he's moving. And there you have it. That is how you animate a texture. Well, stay tuned for the next episode of the Platforming 2D tutorial where I will teach you how to build backdrops, setting up the environment, and building in some props. It may not all be in one video. There may be a series, backdrops, and then the props, building in platforms, and then maybe even to moving platforms. And then I'll finally get into the part that makes your game extremely challenging, and that is enemies. The artificial intelligence needed to challenge your player in something they have to beat. 
every great fairy tale has a villain. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon.